Hey everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Changing Tune. On the last episode, I mentioned that we'd be talking about rock and roll, but we'll need to put that episode on hold. Today, we'll be talking to a former NFL star and Blue Springs alum who has a big heart for music and has released some rap songs over the years. But enough of the buildup, let's get right down to it. So I'm here with former NFL star Brandon Lloyd, and something not everyone knows is that you also do some rap and you've released a few songs over the years. That's right. Uh, so I have this show because I love music, and but the problem is I only know a lot about rock, and I want to get involved in other genres of music because I feel that music is probably one of the best ways to express yourself. That's right. And so being able to know how different people express themselves, I think, is a big deal, and that's why the show exists. Nice. Um, and from what I read up a little bit on you is that you feel the same way. That's right. That, yeah, that, that I, I prefer to express myself through music um, than to talk about it or write about it. Um, uh, I find uh, the writing process therapeutic. Um, uh, I just, what I learned in uh, Blue Springs High School in psychology class was purge writing, um, uh, a Freudian way to uh, get a stream of consciousness out on paper um, is the, is the therapy equivalent to speaking to someone else about it. And that's how I looked at um, creating my music projects. Um, was that um, uh, I grew up, um, my, both my parents were educators, so they had summers off just like we did as, uh, as students. So we'd all pile in the car and we'd be driving and there'd be the AM stations and Willie Nelson, Kenny Rogers, these are all the songs that would be playing. And I started to grow a, a appreciation for sounds and, um, and lyrics um, and uh, instruments that weren't typically in the music that I was listening to on 103.3. Um, uh, uh, I'd say my, uh, uh, my, the first song that influenced me into wanting to write songs was um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Will Smith. Yeah. And, um, uh, um, and then, you know, that, around that time, he made his song uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. It was a song about Freddy Krueger and Jason, right? And so I was like, all right, the storytelling aspect to uh, song creating really captured me because I had a vivid imagination. <laughs> and um, I, I loved music, so I started by uh, looking just to tell short stories. Yeah, that's what I love about music is that, like, even, like, not all music has, like, one specific message, and, like, you can just find your own story in a song, and just, it just makes the song so much more. Um, what would you say, like, you're, you do rap as your main style of music, what about that genre is, like, easy for you to write about and express yourself in that way? Uh, the rhyme. Right. Um, the poetry. Yeah. yeah. The, uh... The other thing is, is the observation. Um, uh, it's uh, as a as a as a, a, a rapper and a, and a writer, I'm observing the world, and then I get to comment on that. And so that's what I that's what I like most about that. So growing up, uh, what other kind of music did you listen to? Like, what was your favorite music? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I sang in choir here. Uh, with Mr. Von Cannon, um, uh, so I enjoyed the show tunes. I enjoyed um, the holiday music. Um, I enjoyed piano. I enjoyed, uh, like I said, listening to, to country and western music. Um, uh, growing up, I uh, I think Blues Traveler was really popular. Uh, Nirvana just dropped their album. Um, uh, and then, I mean, and we haven't even gotten to my parents' vinyl collection, right? Yeah. Uh, and we're talking about old Motown, um, uh, uh, the Diana Ross and um, Whitney Houston, Lionel Richie, um, the Ohio Players. Uh, just like we, we, ha we had a lot of access to music and, um, and it was all really grabbing me. So um, how I apply that 
in my music career was I'd bring in those instruments, all the ones that I like, and into song. And so if a producer's producing with um, pianos and uh, we can bring in live bass and add bass to, uh, to uh, the tracks, um, um, horns and, you know, I, I like all those sounds. So when now that producers are really experimenting with different genres, it makes it so much more fun because it's all, all the stuff I like in a song uh, and, and it's in the form of uh, um, a rhyme that, I, uh, that I'm good at. Yeah, I was listening to your song Heavy just last night, and I noticed at the end, like, I'm a rock guy, and I love that guitar at the end of that song. It's really good. Yeah, thank you. That's, um, uh, I enjoy rock rap. I think yeah. that uh, it combines the, the best of, of music, heavy bass and guitars and drums. Like, it doesn't get better than that in music. Yeah, I love so, bass lines all the time. Yeah. Like, those, those are, like, the best parts of songs, and they're hidden, and... Like, they're just so good when you finally hear them. Right. And what I liked about uh, producing Heavy was um, when we took the, uh, the electric guitar and drum out, it's Heavy 808. It's a rap song. But then we take the 808, the drums and the bass out, and then we have a rock song. It's like, it, the, I think the blend to that is, I mean, it was one of my favorite songs to, to produce and write because of it, it combines the, my two favorite genres. So, uh, is it okay if we play some of the song on the show? For sure. Okay, well, let's take a quick listen to some of Brandon's song, Heavy. I roll through like the president through town. I got diamonds the size of earrings and the crown of my medallion. I'm from KC, eat your boys up like a slab of ribs. I got Monopoly money, I got a bag of cribs. And a silver car, two seats, no lid. I'm set up properly, ain't no stopping me. You can't copy me, hate a steady watching me. No tick tock, make money round the clock. Y'all playing with it, get up on my level. Up on my level. You a lightweight, this is heavy metal. This is heavy metal. Boy, it's crunch time, time to lock and load. Lock and load. I'm a rock star, I can rock and roll. I can rock and roll. Y'all playing with it, get up on my level. Up on my level. You a lightweight, this is heavy metal. This is heavy metal. Boy, it's crunch time, time to lock and load. Lock and load. I'm a rock star, I can rock and roll. Yep. Yeah. Really, really good. Yeah, thank you. See the, and the, I created uh, Heavy with the uh, intention where uh, I, I wasn't going to, I didn't use any cuss words in that. Um, and I, it was specifically marketed for television. Yeah. Licensing and syncing was uh, the business I wanted to go in. Um, uh, it was tough to juggle being a professional athlete with the um, uh, facade of a rapper. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, it, that doesn't mesh well, especially with the amount of time that it takes to be a professional athlete. Anything else done is considered a, a distraction. So um, I went into licensing and syncing because I can do the music uh, with relative anonymity. Um, I could sell the songs off. Um, they'll go on to television. Um, the, they synced uh, heavy to... Um, um, Blue Mountain State. Blue Mountain State, yeah. right? Uh, and ended up becoming Radon's uh, theme song, yeah. you know, for a couple episodes. Uh, so that type of exposure and looking at the business end of music, um, uh, the uh, NPPL Paintball 2009 purchased that song. So there's longevity in the songs and um, and and the story behind it. Okay, so now. Uh on to like today, like who are some of your favorite artists going right now? Yeah, um, uh, I enjoy, I, I still listen to Willie Nelson a lot. I think lyrically and the songs that he chooses to, to cover, um, his original songs, the lyrical content, the storytelling, the voice is, it, it's classic. Um, I, I just started, I got into listening to Lucas Nelson, his son, which um, his new project is, is uh, stellar. Um, my, my favorite concert last month was the Colorado Symphony uh, played uh, Purple Rain, Prince's Purple Rain in its entirety. Wow. <laughs> right? So like, 
talk about um, uh, st being stimulated, uh, an audible stimulation. It was beautiful. I bet. Um, uh, uh, I enjoy uh, Dead Mouse. He played in um, in uh, in Denver last month. Also, uh, um, I think the you know it, it sounds cheesy to say, but the Kendrick Lamar stuff is. I mean, like top five of all time. Yeah, I think he's amazing. So definitely. good, and it's like I feel bad saying this. The best was like, yeah, everybody thinks that, but it's like I mean, he really captures the the black angst oh, yeah. well, and um, and then he does it over um, uh, pop beat. It's the beats like really match up when it comes to thinking about a conscious rapper. Yeah, what I love about Kendrick is that he doesn't like fall for like a bunch of the like rap stereotypes going mm -hmm. on right now. Right. He just delivers great music. Right. And and he and he definitely comments on it too. He definitely, you know, talks about overspending, um, promiscuous, promiscuity, um, uh, uh, being promiscuous, and um, he covers a lot. Yeah. And I enjoy the I enjoy all the 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 trap music. Oh yeah, I think it's great. Uh, I I like Two Chains Live, um, uh, uh, Aluna George, uh, Christina and the Queens. Um, um, Marina and the Diamonds was another good one. Yeah, it, uh, I I enjoy that. The entire scene. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have any plans to drop any more music soon? Nothing soon. Nothing soon. Yeah, I have a project um, published, um, but I just I don't have plans to release it yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But um, uh, I de definitely have my music on SoundCloud, um, so people can follow that. Um, uh, B dash Lloyd dash one, and still there. Well, if you want to listen to Brandon's music, that's where you got to go. Uh, anyways, thanks for talking about music with me. I'd love to learn more and get, like, understand more than I previously did. And so what are you going to do to do that? I just, are, you, are you producing music? Are you writing music? No, I'm just listening. I think music has just, it speaks to me, and I, I don't think I have an artistic bone in my body to produce music or write. What I would suggest is um, you find a song that you like, and then um, you, there's a the the pattern to writing the song, and then start with those words, and then rewrite them. So change the words, but sing the same exact song. Um, that's how I started writing music. Um, uh, uh, I used to I had a karaoke machine, and we'd have the blank, the two cassette. I'd buy the, the single, 50 cent single, because it had an instrumental on it, and, um, and it had the song. So I'd take the song, and I just rewrote the words and stayed with the same pattern. And that was a, a great way to find my voice in the music. Um, uh, singing the choruses, covering songs, that is a great way to find your voice in music. And then once you start re 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 rewriting the, the lyrics, then you'll, the, your own artist comes out of that. Yeah, I could see myself writing some songs, but I, I honestly couldn't see myself singing them. I don't think people need to hear that. <laughs> I, I hear it plenty of times in the shower, and I'll tell you. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that the world needs to hear that. But. You'd be surprised. You, know, you, gotta, you think about it. Um, you know, Michael Jackson was not a, a technically sound singer. He sung in falsetto only. Um, when I think of a technically sound singer, I'd say uh, Lionel Richie. I mean, it could hit the notes. It was smooth. It was you know, it was crisp. You know, he hit he hit different octaves. He could do it all. Um, but what makes either one of them more successful than the other? You know, yeah. um, preference of the listeners. Um, who else? I mean. Uh, I mean, think about Marilyn Manson's singing voice, <laughs> right? It's like, no, man. <laughs> um, uh, I like listening to, there's a group called Opeth. Uh, they're melodic metal. And, uh, um, and so, you know, you think about what a, a heavy metal singer sings like. And that voice that they're going to, right? Yeah. But these guys are, are Juilliard trained, right? So they're not just... 
screaming. They're actually trained um, diaphragm, projection, uh, um, uh, octave. They're trained. So there's, there's, a, there's a, uh, a sound for everybody, you know, and it's just kind of building that confidence up to, uh, to go out there and tell your story because that's what's the tough part about being an artist is the vulnerability. Like, like these are my stories. Yeah. Like, purge writings, right? And then people are going to judge them. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. That definitely got me a lot farther than I was planning on getting with this interview. And like, I do love music, and that is something that I will probably try to pursue. Fantastic. And thank you so much, uh, Brandon Lloyd. Check him out on SoundCloud. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to thank Brandon Lloyd. I got a lot out of that interview, as I'm sure you did as well. Next episode, we'll be going over the history of rock and roll, so stay tuned. Anyways, I'm Brett Tiemann, and make sure to keep your ears open to all the music around you.